Can I get a motion to open the meeting? I move. Second. All in favor? Some of the, the printed out um, agendas are not up to date. As I'm sure most of you realize, we plan this meeting pretty quickly. So um, it's been fluid as the days goes on. The day has gone on. So we're going to start with public input. If there's anybody here for public input, please come up to the podium. State your name. Um, you have three minutes to address the board. And please leave any individual names out of your um, statement. Anybody here for public input? Hi, Sandy Kroll. Um, well, I didn't know if there was going to be public input or not. As you said, um, the agenda stated that there wasn't. Um, I do have a question, several questions. You're going in to speak um, about the coronavirus. I don't know how you're able to uh, classify that as executive. Um, I know you're going to use the word safety of children. Uh, if you delve into your law books, educational law a little harder, um, that is safety of terrorist attacks, uh, safety of mass um, problems, not a public coronavirus that's going across the world. Um, what you're doing is you're creating more frustration and fear in the public, because now there's people thinking that there's somebody in our school district that possibly has it, and maybe someone's been exposed to it, I think going into executive session is wrong to go into to discuss it. I've been a board president before, and I've never seen something like this. So my question is, and I'm going to get an answer, do you plan on coming out of executive session and making any resolutions? Is that on the agenda? Is there a possibility for you to come out of executive session and vote on a resolution tonight? We are going to come out of executive session. There's nothing, to my knowledge, that's going to be requiring a board action. Okay, thank you. Hi. Anybody else here for public input? Sure, I'll go. I'm Larry Baltz. No um, my question, or my, my comments tonight are just that um, I realized that tonight's meeting was uh, called in haste and was put together quickly. Um, when I became aware there was a meeting, I checked on the agenda, and then I saw that um, the topic of discussion was the coronavirus. So I thought, oh, good. I want to come and find out about this. But then I realized it was pure executive session. So for me, when I'm looking at um, the regulations regarding the exec session, I can't see a single thing on there that relates to public health discussions and the district's response to those things. Um, and I just hope that you know, you'll reconsider and have the public. I think this is just a really good thing for everybody here to know about. I think it's important that we understand what the board's thoughts are. Um, I also hope that if you choose to go into executive session, that you just don't recite the boilerplate, we're going in for a particular reason. I would like to know exactly why you're going for executive session um, to discuss the coronavirus and other than, than doing this in public view. That makes no sense to me. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. So, anyone else here for public input? All right, so um, thank you for both of your uh, comments, and I hope you'll stick around for the rest of the meeting. Um, I'd like to get a motion to um, go into executive session um, in order to discuss, one, a matter involving a particular student, two, a matter concerning the employment of a particular person, three, collective negotiations, and four, a matter which, if disclosed, could imperil public safety. Moved. Second. All in favor? Well, then can we have discussion, please? Sure. Um, if we are going to be discussing the virus or safety issues after exec, then I think we have done this wrong because to have it where the public has to sit in the hall and not know if they're waiting a half an hour or an hour or an hour and 45 minutes is not in respect of their time and effort. So. Um, and what you've just outlined, and I appreciate the detail, is very different than what was posted on the yeah. website and communicated to the community. So I'm just concerned, and I, know, I don't believe that this is in any way deliberate, but I'm concerned that we're not acting in a way that is transparent enough. 
and should be much more transparent. I agree. If this wasn't a rapidly flowing situation and wasn't developing so quickly, I would love to take more time and have spent all weekend or the coming days planning a perfect meeting. But that's not the case we're in right now. So as much as I respect your thoughts on this, I respectfully disagree with you. Is there any other discussion? Yeah, I would just say, and I'm, I was late, um, and I missed some of the comment and discussion, but this is a public health situation, and I appreciate Jordana calling a meeting at short notice so that we can try to address it. And as I understand it, we're proceeding under the advice of counsel. And, I, and just to respond to some of the comments, of course, this is something that is very public, and we want to hear from the public, and we have an obligation to be communicating with the public. But there are aspects of this that necessarily need to be discussed in executive session, and that we're doing that. And, and as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, Jordana, proceeding as we were advised to by council. And let's not lose sight of the forest for the trees here. And I appreciate Chris's comments as well, but our, our primary function here is to be looking out for the safety of the kids who go to school here and the folks who work here. And let's, let's try to stay focused on that. And so I, I think you were proceeding as you were advised to by our attorney, and so I'm in favor of it. Was the attorney consulted about specifically what we're covering as a, in terms of coronavirus, coronavirus in the exec session? I believe so. I'll have he a conversation was? with her. So we're not covering anything that wouldn't potentially imperil students and that we would, by law, be required to discuss publicly? After the uh, executive session, we'll discuss publicly uh, where we are with all the information and move forward with that publicly. Okay. So I didn't be see this that. evening for everyone here if they want to say yes. Okay, well, I, I didn't realize we were doing that. I, I think the, maybe the yeah, you came in a few minutes late. You so know, I'm sorry. Discussed that the agenda was changing. Well, the, the front well. doors were all locked, so we had to find another way to get in the building. Um, you were on lockdown, um, but the uh, no. I'm only asking because the agenda, as of an hour ago, didn't indicate we were going to have that agenda item publicly. So that's good to hear. And just Thanks. to follow up on that, literally in less than an hour ago, we received the information. <laughs> from the state and the Department of Education and so was literally cut off the press. So this information and the situation is evolving as we speak. Very fluid. And so we hope that people will understand that we will move forward with addressing the issue um, as quickly and appropriately as we can. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? I would encourage the public to stay if you can. I know it's uncertain as the time, but if you could say that would be great. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yeah. So, Ellie, I think the next part is for you are going to inform us uh, on the public portion of this regarding more general. Yes, and there um, obviously has been a tremendous yeah. amount of information. Um, we have shared the information publicly as we have received it. Um, in less than 24 hours, uh, six different documents. Um, the first document uh, last evening, we presented an update to the staff of where we have been up until last evening. And that included um, that uh, up to date that there were no confirmed local cases, and that we would continue to post on our website any information that we receive regarding other districts' information from the state and any other information we receive. And Scott has, has set up a, a site on the website where we will now post all of the information in English as soon as we get it. And Fausto has been um, kind enough to say that he will update the information in Spanish, and the document we got today, I think, was 19 pages, so it, it's quite extensive. Um, this, I'm sorry, the Spanish is up also now. So the, quickly. Yeah. Wow. That's I'm impressive. Sorry. Thank Translated you. Very well. um, we did share the information of the confirmed um, information that we had got, that there was one patient in Southampton Hospital, and also that students from overseas would be quarantined. Um, quarantined at Stony, uh, Stony Brook Southampton camp campus, which is what we knew last night. Um, Paul is continuing to have the custodial staff wipe down the surface, the surfaces that are used, the cafeteria tables are being cleaned constantly. We've ordered new supplies. The nurses have ordered more thermometers and 
we've filled up with as much uh, of the supplies that we can. Some of the, in, of the supplies that we've ordered are um, on back order, so we hope to, to get keep the supplies, but we're constantly um, maintaining and disinfecting surfaces. Um, we are now in the process of talking about with the administrators all of the activities that we're considering canceling. And that's changing on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, depending on the information that we receive. And um, shortly, we'll review some of those activities that we're in the process, and then um, the staff members can contribute ideas of the kinds of things that we're considering. Um, and then um, we have also indicated that students who are absent, we, we want students and parents to understand that they should if their children are not well to keep the children home, that they should not feel compelled to come to school to keep up perfect attendance, that those absences will be excused. Uh, and we also uh, are indicating that uh, any suggestions that people have to share with us, we appreciate because there, as we will realize, so many aspects that are new to us and we have to consider. So that was last evening. Uh, this morning we received uh, a notice from the Superintendent's Association awaiting uh, guidance on closing schools and the conversation, we were supposed to have had that guidance last week and everybody's been waiting for the updated guidance because there have been conflicting sets of information given out by different agencies and people wanted clarification. There was an extensive meeting last week with, I think there were 13 presenters uh, and the superintendent, after the presentations, the superintendents asked questions so that we could have more clarification, and there were no answers. And they were, the presenters actually had indicated that they were surprised at some of the questions themselves, things that they had not addressed. So these, these are ongoing issues. Um, then after that, there was a conference call with superintendents and the health department um, earlier today and items that were discussed were um, uh, self-quarantining, what was required for that. The hotline was not responsive to some people who were calling for information. Um, they promised that they would increase it so it was 24 hours, so we hope that that is more responsive. At that point, there was only one case in Suffolk County. Um, advice was given to, quote, stay the course, whatever that meant. Obviously, they did not want people to panic and, and, and make decisions as we go along. Um, the question of overnight trips came up, and there was not a clear answer to that as well. Um, com conflicting information had been released to parents as to what to do and how to make decisions. And uh, at that point, the information that was given out to superintendents was that if the person was not present presenting any symptoms, that there was no reason for them to go home. That was the latest information as of about 12.30 this afternoon. And um, after that, two other districts closed. Can I ask a question about um, if they weren't presenting symptoms, does that mean like if they were exposed to it and they weren't presenting? Or a person, yeah, who, who might have been exposed. Uh, the question came up also uh, regarding the 14-day period, people who might have been exposed in you know, prior to 14 days. And so there, there were a lot of questions and there weren't clear answers at that point, still waiting for further guidance. Um, then after that, since then, uh, there was information that Mattituck, Plainview, Old Bethpage, Salem, Wading River, and Uniondale had issues. So from this morning to this afternoon, there were four districts that were noted. Um, Are they all closing? Is that, that? Uh, yeah, Plainview you Bethpage will close tomorrow. Um, I think you need to. And, and they're not Tuck? sure how Maddie long Tuck they'll be closed. Is closed? If we got a, 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 a notice from Madden okay. Tuck. And again, they may close for one day while they clean. And each day we have to find out what the information is. Um, then we received information from our attorney later on um, regarding information that we should send out to people if, for instance, during the next break they travel to the countries. Um, that are indicated as uh, level two and three, that the issue of the quarantining when they come back. So that 
we, we haven't really had a chance to digest that because that again just came in within an hour of the start of this meeting and then after that we got finally got information from the state which I forward to, to, to you and Scott posted on the website um, that's quite extensive and that indicates the steps that we need to take many of which we're in the process of taking and all of the things that we need to consider and the actions of updating our plans and incorporating what we would do if we had to close and notifications and timelines and so on. So we, that's information that we all have to work on and digest. So in less than 24 hours, we had quite a bit of information change. We anticipate that that will continue to happen as if this is obviously unfolding information and we have to really follow the guidelines. And so we'll keep everybody posted as soon as we have it and we try to be as clear as possible as to what we know, what's in flux, and, and as changes come, come through. The information that we have on our website, I, I've seen some <coughs> districts um, have sections where it'll take core of our, and then they have like all these documents underneath it. Can we just, if it's possible on our website, work on what, whatever information we have, um, as long as it's not confidential, obviously, and unless it's with personnel related, it shouldn't yeah. be confidential with this is to just have it in an area so and let the public and, and oh, families yeah. know. It, is it? Yeah. So, so we have all page, the documents. Just click on the, it says yeah. click here. For and all the documents we have are in the yeah. attached? Okay, good. Yeah. Well, we, we, we had previously submitted documents which are now outdated. So we started from Fridays, right? Okay, just, so that's so, all there. Just the latest because a lot of the information in the previous documents is no longer accurate. Have we thought about having um, a workshop or forum for parents and the public ahead of time? Like, you know, we're going to, you know, and see if anybody, I mean, maybe people don't want to come in a group, but if they want, you know, if they do and they want to say, like, I'm concerned about this or questions about that, just give, you know, they've done that in some districts and it's gotten some positive response. Is that something we're thinking about doing? We're open to suggestions on what will, the information that people would like to have mm -hmm. and the form in which they would like to have it. So if, if we oh, have gotten feedback of what people would like to appreciate to share in that as well. Because there's there's the documents we're getting from the state and then there's like the conversations we're having tonight where we're, you know, what's the process in which and what ifs and those kinds of things that that, that people don't want to know about. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we had prepared a, prepared a list of um, the various upcoming activities and programs, and uh, I'd like to ask people to provide their, their thoughts and uh, principals and uh, staff to provide their thoughts on the kinds of things that they're considering um, for, for sports activities. In general, um, we feel it's important to be very proactive and cautionary and to avoid large groups where people will be uh, coming together in, in might be in close proximity, <coughs> uh, people that are coming from areas that we don't know, people could have visited other countries and so on, so all of those things that we're taking into consideration. In terms of sports, if, 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 we're, <laughs> if there's a schedule where we're supposed to play a school and that school is closed because of this, one would assume that that sporting event is going to be rescheduled. It would be rescheduled or canceled, or canceled depending on the, uh, if it's a playoff game or a varsity level, or depending on the level of the game. Okay. I also think, though, the broader question, um, and we don't have to decide tonight, but I think we have to decide soon is, um, and I talked to Eric about this earlier today, is do we consider curtailing our co-curricular activities where kids are traveling to different parts of the island if we're truly trying to contain and, and limit our exposure. Do we have a sense of what other districts are doing? Ones that have not shut down yet? Everybody is texting everybody else. <laughs> well, and it's also that you do a survey of all the districts, depending on where they are and what day it is. It's right, changing. So like answer. last week, if you looked on New, Ro New Rochelle's website, it said all activities after school are canceled. Mm -hmm. They then subsequently had to close school. So it's, you know, each district and each day it's changing. Yeah, it's um, just, I'm sorry. Uh, um, tonight our girls concluded their varsity basketball season. 
We are actually, today was the first day of varsity spring sports. Middle school sports don't start till March 22nd. We do have a uh, 10 to 10 to 12 day window here where we won't have any scheduled contests at the varsity and junior varsity level. However, we still have uh, middle school contests scheduled for the next two weeks. Um, I don't know if the board would look in, in, into that. We, we will be hosting other schools uh, a few times over the next couple weeks, as well as traveling to uh, East Hampton and, uh, and South Hampton and Hampton Bays and, and East Mauritius and those such. So, you know, we do have a window now because uh, if we wanted to be more restrictive, the timing right now would be, would be the time to be more restrictive. Uh, if we just wanted to keep our teams here, but uh, and we are we are leaning toward being more restrictive. A perfect example would be the robotics. Uh, districts were going back and forth for days about what to do, and finally today they they did cancel it. Um, but the, the organization itself, but that everybody wants the kids to be able to participate as much as possible, and yet the concern and so. Those discussions are, are going on. And the next event is the multicultural night, which is a wonderful opportunity, but we're leaning towards canceling that as well. And we need to inform people because a lot of preparation goes into it. So within the next day or so, we'll be able to be more forthcoming with the particulars. Uh, to speak to Chris's question, uh, you know, what are, what are other districts doing? I would just say that in my, you know, 25 years of doing this, this is unlike any other, you know, health uh, situation that we've run across. And that lens, you know, in terms of what are other districts doing, that's the way I usually think. But not in this circumstance. But not in this situation because I feel as though everybody has sort of been in a holding pattern waiting for guidance. And yet it really hasn't come down until this afternoon and even that guidance to me is Could sort be of outdated by tomorrow. It's, well, not, it's also not specific and clear. It's not enough. crystal clear guidance. Yeah. So I think, un, you know, unfortunately, we're, we're sort of operating uh, as somewhat of an independent entity this time, and we have to take the information and make the best decision we can in the interest of what we value. Right. So in terms of moving forward on this, because, and it's very helpful, the board here has gotten a list of upcoming events. Some of them are this week. That. Um, are decisions made, and if not, are we looking to ha hear what those decisions, the thought processes of which you're going to get to those decisions? I mean, some of these are in a, a day or two. So, um, what are you guys thinking? I mean, you, you're the ones that are going to be making the call. I, Go ahead, Bert. I think I'm, I have concerns over because the kids are going to. It's middle school, and maybe I'm being extra motherly, but I have concerns over the North Shore math tournament because they are in a close proximity within an environment and they're working together in groups and they're traveling far up island. So it's not like they're going close and that's on Friday. I already talked to Mr. Molly about it and I said we were gonna discuss it tonight. Maybe I'm being extra conservative, but I have concerns with our kids going. It's a fantastic opportunity that they're gonna miss, but I have concerns over it. Yeah, I don't, without getting yeah. into the specific like events, specific. because I don't think that's what we were gonna do. Mm -hmm. no. I think that the lens that I'm going to apply to it, in terms of what the thinking is going to be, if that was your question, yes, is to limit the extent to which kids, uh, the, the students under our charge, are put in harm's way. Mm -hmm. And obviously, people are going to have different opinions about what what is you know what constitutes harm's way. But right now, it's very very fluid. Um, it seems like every day there's going to be more and more of these cases out there. So if I'm charged with making a decision, the lens I'm applying is how do I protect the students under our charge, which means I'm going to be inclined to cancel a lot of activities where I can't accurately ascertain whether or not they're going to be at risk of contacting the virus or not, or being exposed to it. That makes sense. I think that sounds very wise, and I think we should err on the side of caution and, and being overly cautious. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather couple months from now look back and say we canceled a couple things that maybe we didn't need to then not be cautious enough and, and put more people at risk. Yeah I think parents and probably staff will also breathe a sigh of relief knowing something is canceled. There, Of course there's going to be both sides of it but 
I know even today, I mean, even last week there were people coming and saying, when will morning program be canceled? And so then you did it, a lot of people breathe, breathe a sigh of relief. Other people won't, but just, you know, there are those people who are, are breathing those sighs of relief and you never, support you. You never know the, the bullet you dodged here, so to speak. You never know that when you canceled it, someone, a child or an adult, would have gotten sick had you had it. So you... What we're doing is preventing something that you can't actually say, look what we've prevented. And that's um, for the near future, right? Mm -hmm. We're keeping that until the near until future. For the until notice, until until yeah. you make a decision on that. Yeah. And it's hard to know. That's, it's hard to know if yeah. we're looking at a few months or if we're looking at something more substantial because we have, there's no rule book or playbook for this. No. And mm -hmm. it, would, it would appear that we are, we are not in the recovery mode here. We're in the expansion mode here, yeah. right? Yeah, so, and then, you know, I think Obviously, the conversation starts with keeping the children safe, but I think the other piece, and this went into the decision for canceling something like morning program, you know, that's a very important part of our school day, but our school day can go on without that. So we want to keep the children safe, but if we can also maintain the school day, you know, then we're taking care of two important things. So. Yeah. And, and that, that, you know, in morning program, you also have community members coming in, and exactly. so you're creating a, an additional risk you don't have in the rest of the day. Right. So we're anticipating that uh, after tomorrow's BOCES meeting in the morning, that we will have, hopefully we'll have more definitive information and then we'll be able to determine which mm -hmm. activities we will cancel. Okay. And then the other thing, the piece to think about is just how do we have a really effective communication plan about, that's very timely, specifically about the events, because that, you know, it could be we're canceling something tonight or tomorrow just based on new information you received. Right. And um, so just proactively, I, would, I, I know we, we always work hard on communication, but we really make it very clear. And then we ask the, ask the school family, if you feel like you're not getting communicated well, what are you suggesting here? Just so that they know that we're working hard to try to make sure um, that we're on the same page. Anything else? No, no. All right. I, I just wanted to bring one more point, and I know maybe we're jumping the gun here. I have to deal with three families from the city that they asked me that they want to move out here in the spring, so I don't know if that could affect the enrollment in the schools out here. Oh, because they're just trying, to be, in, they're yep. trying to be just in the city? Just something to bring it up and like start thinking about it. Related to this? Yep. Good information. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Like just today, I have three hundred. Yeah, happen after nine eleven. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I was speaking this weekend with a New York City Health Department worker that deals with the situation, and she thinks there are thousands of cases right now in New York City that they just haven't like come out yet. So there could be like the way the stock market like there was a panic today. There could be a panic in a couple of weeks. So we just need to be prepared. Thank you for sharing this good information. All right, so I think you all know the board supports you guys on this, and it sounds like everyone's in agreement that, you know, err on the side of caution, cancel things sooner than later as you see fit. Yeah. Can, can we also just touch base briefly on if, because we don't know if this will happen, if it does, what, how fast it could happen, where we would have to close. Let's hope we don't have to close. But if we have to close, based on what we know now, what should folks expect in terms of the type of communication and how we've thought about potentially providing instruction? Uh, or could going? Yeah, obviously if we have to close, it would depend on the circumstances, whether it's a one-day close or whether, and we have to wait, or whether it's going to be longer depending upon the reason for the close and, and direction we get from the Department of Health. So those would be two different methods, and we would communicate in, with the media, with our blasts, with uh, any information, any way that we could get that information out. Um, and the whole idea of the way in which we would provide instruction is what we've been discussing. Uh, it's new, and then at the same time, we have to update all of the required information 
for all the reporting that we're required to do and all the other agencies that need to be notified. So that's that we're developing all of that as we speak, and we're hoping that um, we'll be able to communicate, post everything on the website as we develop it, so people are informed as it develops. But any any um, avenue or pathway that people can suggest that would be helpful and that would inform people, we're certainly open to ideas on how, how best to do this and keep everybody as safe as possible. Uh, can I just add to that? Um, I did send around messages today to all the staff, checking to make sure that everybody can be reached. You should have gotten as well. Also, added a link today on the website for um, community members without children in the school. If they'd like to get updates from us, they can fill out a quick form with their email address, and they'll add them to the list. That's a great idea. We send out. We don't send everything. They won't get everything the school gets in general, but you know, we'll pick and choose and decide this is worthy that the general community should be aware of it, not just the those with students. So that's now on the, on the front of the website as well. Okay. Mr. Thanks. All right, so. Uh, I mean, I, what, Scott, just as a, I was thinking, what kind of timing do you think you'd need to set up any, some kind of like remote learning? Well, you know, as we, we've been talking about at the Pearson Middle High School. Right, we I'm not many, talking about the elementary, Matt. Was many of the different. teachers are already using some sort of technology, so um, I think we'd really have to, you know, look to that as them already having a lot of experience. We wouldn't have a great deal of time to do for I was thinking, is there something we could be doing now proactively to work with Jim and the teachers that, you know, a couple teachers at a time to get ready if that's the case, so that if it's a short notice, we've already got ahead of that. Yeah, we can, we can certainly look to do things like that. And actually, while I was sitting here, I was looking for quick links that I could send them, like you know, cheat sheets, you know, just mm -hmm. here's step one, step two, step three, if you want to use this particular technology. Um, so yes, yeah, so it, it is something. I just think we should consider doing that now so that it's not a rush or a right. one day thing. And well, the other thing that I was thinking, just to piggyback off what you're saying is, um, you know, I think there's a lot of students that have computers and internet at home. It'd be, it'd be nice to know who doesn't so that we can kind of be proactive about making sure they've got a contingency plan. Well, if you think about the fact that our Chromebook model is students leave the computers here, we already kind of have an idea of those that have come to us and said they're unable to do their work from home, and we've addressed that. So we may not actually have to go through the whole process of distributing Chromebooks, it's an option, but we would probably do it only in the case where we had right. students who came to us. But otherwise, I think our community is in pretty good shape in terms of having access to a computer and Wi-Fi at home. Do we know that at younger grades? Because at the younger grades, they may not normally <coughs> need to have access to that to be successful in well, the classroom? We've been having conversations, and I want to speak for Mr. Malone, but we talked about this today. They, we make up different options for different grade levels, different you know subject areas and so forth. So technology may not be the only answer that we, we come up with just for that reason that it may be new to these students or they may not have access to it at home, but it may just be too young. So Right. Because because if they if they're younger but they but the instruction is going to come through technology, we may not know that they don't have access to it because they're not you having to do homework or something. Right. I, again, I think we got something that was forwarded today. That, you know, some districts have provided the technology to every student or technology to students that are in need. And I think it's just important that there, we know that there are families that may be in a circumstance that we will work with those families. If if it comes to the situation where we need to, to, to uh, um, do this, go down this path, we'll work with them to make sure their children are taken care of. Yes, that's already a conversation that we yeah. got today about. And and no one will be left, good. kind of left yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. important to start Behind. the process. I, mean, I hope it never happens and they just yes. learn it. But. Another complication uh, that we're facing uh, is that because of the data privacy laws, we have to make sure that we have the agreement of any of the providers that we work with if we're providing hotspots and so on, that they, we have the privacy uh, protection protection and that they sign all their required papers, which is a, a new process that we're working on simultaneously. So we have to make sure that we cover all the bases so we, we are in the process of having those discussions and moving forward with those plans. Is, I mean, this is all new. Is, <coughs> is BOCES is kind of a central service organization serving any new role in assisting districts through this process? That will be discussed tomorrow. <coughs> tomorrow? Yeah, and they, uh, any of the programs that we use through them, they are required to 
to follow up on that aspect, so we may have to then transfer some of the processes we have over to BOCES so they can take that over. Uh, and I would like to just publicly thank the administrators for the amazing job that they're, in addition to doing their all their own responsibilities, how they have all pitched in and stepped up to the plate and very willing to go above and beyond um, with ideas, with with work, with time, with everything. So uh, I do want to express everybody's uh, every, everybody's extra work that they're putting in, and, and really all of the staff as well, not only the administrators, but other staff as well. <laughs> and we have another board meeting on Monday, right? Yes. So I, I know we've got a budget workshop and all that, but can we have a formal agenda item of an update of this? Because I'm sure there'll be more stuff that happens between now and then, so folks will know that we're going to cover it. And if they want to talk to us, they know to come in. All right. Um, anybody, anybody here for public input too? All right. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay. All in favor. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.